also listening critically, and I was doing it as much as I could, but I was also just enjoying the number of people who were playing this piece and sounding amazing. Thank you so much. Um, uh, just a couple of things to maybe think about is, um, so my background is in jazz and the big band and all that stuff, and I am a big band composer, and I still have my big band and all that stuff. And, you know, I've played a lot of pieces that are tempo 250 and 300, and the way that you can do that, the only way you can do that is by relaxing, right, and realizing that not all notes are equally important. So if you go back and listen to any scat solo by Ella Fitzgerald or Dizzy Gillespie or Archie Sandoval, I mean, it's a lot like uh, the way I'm talking to you now. Not every syllable is the same uh, volume, or else that would be weird and creepy and robotic, right? <laughs> so think about that with this piece, because it almost felt like two-thirds of you wanted to go faster, but there wasn't enough relaxation in the room to make that happen, right? Um, um, like, I'm not singing every note the same volume, because that doesn't make any musical sense, right? So prioritize the notes that are important, and play the shape of the line, and re relax, and pay less attention to those bottom notes, and you'll be able to go faster, right? Um, baseline folks, if you just kind of relax and go beep, and breathe wherever you want, because there's like nine of you playing. <laughs> Probably 11, maybe more, right? So breathe wherever you want, get back in, play softer and just more relaxed, and everybody will be able to um, to probably take it to temple that it feels like it wants to go, right? The clarinet thing. <laughs> That's the effect. Instead of going da -da 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 that bottom note doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, I almost wrote all those bottom notes as, notes as X's, as ghost notes, because they're just not that important, okay? So the accent, and the further away you get from the accent, the less important the note is, okay? So air and fingers and time, right? Air, fingers, and time. Time is what matters in groove. You want to groove, you've got to have good time. Okay, um, and that also goes for the first movement. It sounded lush and warm and beautiful, but it didn't sound like we're all agreeing about where things should change. And if you have the melody, I understand that, right? Sorry. <laughs> My challenge with that first movement was trying to notate something that's supposed to sound improvised in someone's right hand and split that up between 15 different people in three octaves. Sorry, right? But for those of you who are supporting that melody thing, you've gotta be right there so that their quirky rhythmic things can play off of that solid time. Okay, so we gotta know exactly where we're breathing, where we're coming in, and where we're changing the notes, right? And also just enjoy those harmonies. I can say so much. I've always wanted to play these kinds of harmonies in an ensemble, right? And I didn't realize how much I did until I was in middle school, because in my middle school we had a jazz band all of a sudden, so I did that. And I would come back to a wind ensemble and be like, why are these so different? I don't think they have to be as different as they are, right? Why are like all of these chords, seventh, ninth, and eleventh, and all of these triads? I didn't understand that. So I've been dying to have these kind of a harmonic experience in wind ensemble, and I love writing these kinds of chords. So enjoy that. If you have a funky, weird note, just sit in that one, especially in the first movement where you actually have time to. You don't really have time to in the second movement. Um, and just a couple of things. Um, that I can tell you with regards to the second movement that you can write in. After the, the, all the modulations, you've got ba -do 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 -da -do -da. you put a fall on that. Ba -do 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 -da -do -bow. Yes, it doesn't want falls. <laughs> um, that was uh, 159. Yes. Also, I love the line in the horns one and two, and in the alto sax at 160, sing that out. It's very vaudeville, right, intentionally. I don't know why, that's what I went to put there. So, sing that out. And then also, because of your excellent wind ensemble training, you absolutely want to get off the 180 and do not. It seems like the most intuitive thing to do as wind ensemble musicians. So all of a sudden, get soft in those eight notes. Stay loud and get louder from there. And then, when you hit that downbeat on 182, right? Lead trumpet. Where are you? Trumpet one. If you feel.
feel so inspired with that kind of a big man gesture, you can hold that over like a, like a fraction of a second. Okay? And um, I mean, I don't know anything about the hall that we're going to be in, but like that's a big ring moment. So I don't know. I heard there's carpet in that space, so there might not be that much ring. Um, yeah, it feels like you want to go faster, and I want that for you, but you can't do that unless you relax. Also, it's going ta 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 ta. Tongues are working way too long. So many notes are not important. So deprioritize the not so important notes, right? And then. Uh, Percussion section drive. Right? Take it off. That was awesome. That was great. I enjoyed the lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll hang around. And, uh, Is there any part you'd like to hear again? I think it might be worth it to do. Yeah. Some of the well, sure. Um, talking about singing movies, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay.